Here's a little tip on how to keep your wrestling mats clean and your um, athletes safe and, you know, not have your athletes get knocked out before a big tournament. Um, number one, we like to, we just keep, you know, there's ring room spray here. Antibiotic ointment, this is a game changer. So we do, at our camp, we do a skin check before the camp begins. That way we can pinpoint any kids who might be coming into our camp that might have a skin infection. Um, well, we've had a few, so we have to send them home, unfortunately. But um, it keeps everyone safe. We also do skin checks every morning. So you as a high school coach or a youth coach before districts and regionals, you might want to start doing skin checks before every practice. And you're not just looking for skin diseases or issues, you're looking for trouble spots. So we have a clipboard we keep right over here. Here's our wrestling gym, by the way. We have 5,000 square foot here, uh, bleachers right there, vending machine, you name it. So we have a med kit area. Kids have constant access to antibiotic ointment because during the skin checks, we're also looking for scratches and scrapes and cuts and so forth, right? Because anytime there's a break in the skin, there's a chance to get a disease. And moms and dads, remember, your kids probably don't get a uh, skin infection from the wrestling mat. They probably got it from your own knee pad that you've never washed. These things are disgusting, some of them. You probably never washed your kid's wrestling shoe. Think of all the MRSA and Impetigo and staff that's on that wrestling shoe, especially these big guys, 140, 180, 200 pound kids. They're sweating seven pounds a, a practice. Their wrestling shoes are squishing and sweat and they practice five days a week. 40 pounds of sweat a, a week or more is coming out, all right? I don't mean to, to gross you out, but it's a fact. You should wash your uh, kid's knee pads wipe down their headgear, wash their shoes probably once a week at least, right? So, uh, but if the kids will use this antibiotic ointment on their cuts and scrapes, now we're creating a protective layer where the skin's natural defenses, which they're pretty amazing, your skin's defenses uh, can no longer work. Here's a girl's bathroom. Well, it's kind of girls and boys, depending upon the camp. So we have only four showers and two bathroom, two stalls in there. But in the, the, the boys' bathroom here, during our girls' camp, we just switch the signs, obviously. And in here, we have, you know, I don't know, wall of toilets, wall of urinals, sinks. And we have 18 showers plus four there, so 22 showers. And that brings me to number three. Um, it's best if you can make your kids shower right after practice, especially you high school coaches. Now, I know there's, a, I think, a lawsuit when they had the showering tower where all the kids have to stand around that thing and shower together. Uh, I don't think you can make kids shower anymore around those. Um, we always had to when I was a kid, but things have changed, right? So it's best if you can make your kids shower right after practice. Now, as far as showering, we have our athletes get an antibiotic soap. You don't need to spend money on the expensive stuff. Uh, usually Selsun Blue, a lot of doctors uh, I know and, and, and wrestling people have said that that's fun, fantastic because it's, it's, um, it's a very strong soap. So Selsun Blue with a little scrubby thing, all right? Or we just have our athletes bring four or five, maybe six bars of uh, antibacterial dial soap. Now killing the bacteria on your skin probably isn't good, but you know, during the summer camp, um, we want, we're want we more concerned about any bacteria that they could have gotten just from the wears and tear of wrestling, you know, staff and so forth. Uh, if you have ringworm, you definitely want to treat that with a ringworm spray. That's antifungal stuff. So when we recommend kids shower this way, turn the water on, get hot, rinse off for three minutes, turn the water off, soap up with good soap, and let it and then stand for about three minutes. You should look like a snowman with white suds all over you. Then you let it sit, and then you rinse off, Go home. Uh, that's really been a game changer. Skin checks, antibiotic ointment, and us diagnosing their um, skin issues and keeping a notebook where the next day we're like, okay, now Jonathan, you had two spots behind your right ear. We, didn't, we weren't that alarmed, but we wanna double check. So we like to keep track of those things. Here's a small gym. We got two, one and a half mats in here. So we use this quite a bit. Um, then as far as mopping mats, let me go back here. You gotta uh, wash your mop heads every day, but it's a pain in the butt, and plus they're very expensive. And I think the washer and dryer tears them up because it just makes them all pliable. So we switch to using this bad boy right here. So what we do is, you know, we use Simple Green 
number five, Pro 5. Uh, and if you look at this, this is made. You can you, you can wash food utensils in this, uh, baby um, high chairs. I mean, you name it. You can you you can clean uh, lunch trays with this, wall mats, floors. It's made for hospitals, doorknobs, uh, eating utensils, glassware. So I'm not saying you want to rub this all over you or drink it, but you know, once you dilute it, and uh, this has been a game changer for us. Um, we've been using it for a couple of years. I love this stuff. I get it at Home Depot. It's super cheap. Uh, some of you guys may be using that company, that stuff where you just spray the mats and you don't even wipe them. Well, hell, I guess you got to spray the mat like for nine hours to get every square millimeter of the mat coated. Plus, there's a lot of hair on the mats. Disgusting. So we like to mop our mats um, and, and use this uh, and use these push mops. These monster mops are fantastic. But what we also do is we just have this ringer, right? So we just dip these and actually, instead of using simple green, which is about five or $6 a gallon, we use uh, concentrated bleach. So we just use a little bit of bleach with the water and we'll put the mop head in there, ring it, do that four or five times. Then, um, you know, we usually don't, don't um, dry our mop heads. We just put both mop heads back in the bucket and just let them soak in very, very, very diluted bleach water because you don't want to tell these mop heads that they're expensive. But if you just get one of these ringers, and I got a good one, it's like 230 bucks, and I've got this industrial sink here in our, our training facility. We're located in St. Louis, Missouri, 30 miles from St. Louis, 30 miles from the airport, and we have 17,000 square foot here. This is the wrestling complex. But... Uh, you know, we use two mop heads because what we'll do is, especially um, if the mats get really sweaty, especially after live wrestling, you know, we'll uh, we'll spray the mats. Mop heads are already soaking wet because they're soaking in that bleach solution. We play, we, we, we spray simple green and we'll mop half. Then halfway through, we switch to a clean mop head because that way we're, all, we're using uh, two mop heads on every one. And... Um, if we have any kind of outbreak of any issues, which it's been a few years since we have, but if we do, then we use four mop heads because we will spray the mops, the mats, and mop them again. So we mop three times a day and sometimes twice after live with two different mop heads. But as a high school coach, I would probably mop before practice and after. Uh, I'd only mop before if you're pulling the mats out and they're stacking them or they're rolling them up, I would definitely, or maybe if PE classes are on them. But if your mats are out nonstop and the door is locked, I would just mop them after practice. But uh, make sure the, the kids, they barely spray. Make them soak those. So we make sure we go through almost two gallons of um, solution because it says that the surface needs to stay wet for uh, upwards of 10 minutes before that stuff works. So use those ringers and you can find, you can wa wash your mop heads. It takes five minutes to wash too probably less, and that we always have clean mop heads. I know some high school coaches get kind of lazy and you just take them home to the wife and then you forget and, uh, you know, it's it's not good. I've had five kid friends almost die of staff. So it is a dangerous thing. Here's our uh, office here, two coffee pots. Actually, I'm switching one out. So we got a little desk there, roll top. I've got my own room here. <coughs> I pretty much manage this America. I pretty much, I have my own little desk and bed in here. I manage the upper gym. Then I turn the lower gym with all the kids in it. Over to Ty Perler and my coaches for the summer camp. We also do one weekend a month. We do a summer wrestling camp. No, one weekend a month. We do an overnight camp. It's called a competition camp. So summer camps basically ran about 70 days straight this year. We had kids from as far as Japan flying in. And that's no joke. And they flew in, went to camp, and flew back. So they didn't they didn't come here for a vacation. They came here for PerlerWrestling.com wrestling camp. Pretty cool. But, um, we did have kids here from Connecticut, Maine, Oregon. I mean, all over the damn place. It was pretty awesome. Um, so... Now, when you do your mop heads, you got clean, fresh mop heads. Now you're all set. Last thing I would do, once the kids are showering the way you say they should shower, and you have clean mop heads, you're using two mop heads per mat, 
You're using Simple Green 5. You're doing skin checks. You keep antibiotic ointment. They're supposed to use that before and after practice. They have um, antifungal spray and so forth. <clears throat> you should be pretty much uh, staying, staying on top of it. The last thing I would do Last thing I would do is educate the parents and make sure that the kids are bringing a fresh towel. They shouldn't have, probably one towel per week would be fine, but they don't want to use the same towel all season, right? Here's our, here's our bunk house area. I have two of these. So here's a big building. We got 17,500 square foot total. So we have uh, cabinets for all the kids to keep their stuff. And the beds are built on the floor, so there's six man um bed, beds there a couple bathrooms back there uh no showers in this facility here's a coaches area this is called the coaches lounge so my coaches have um you know they got a place to kind of hang out and this is a half door behind me so they can sit in one place and monitor the whole camp from one location we also have cameras everywhere. We have an iPad. We can flip around and see every gym, every building, every nook and cranny. Here's a coach's room. So we have two coaches rooms. And if you go to that door over there, there's another coach's room. And out that door is the other bunkhouse. So we have 60 on each side. Each bunkhouse area has a coach's um, room. So we're constantly supervising, supervising your kids. And uh, we also can monitor everything on our iPad. So everything, we spare no expense out here. Uh, we want to have the best facilities in America. But it is nice that you know your kids are going to be uh, well supervised and kept safe. So we do a good job of, of supervising at our wrestling camp. I know that's a big complaint with a lot of camps, especially the college camps where kids are sort of, they're roaming the town all day and hiking two miles from the dorm to the to the wrestling camp to the mat room our buildings are all just over 30 foot apart we have three buildings that's what the fire code would allow us so i built them as close as possible that way the kids didn't have to have to hike we also have a soccer field over there we have 10 acres so here's the big wrestling or bunkhouse area I'll show you the pro shop and the rec room next. Behind me is the big gym. All right. Lock this sucker up. So the rec room is the last place to check out. And there's also a pro shop in here, kids buy gear, camp store. We also have a, a snack bar, concession stand. So that way, uh, so if you look, there's a big screen on uh, about 50 inch, a couple couches. I'm gonna buy more, tons of tables and chairs. There's a video game back in that corner. Um, toasters, microwaves. <clears throat> there's the pro shop. We have uh, all the gear and snacks and stuff in there. So kids can come. Everything's kept at 68 degrees in our facility all summer. Lockers, so you can keep your stuff locked up, your valuables. And uh, be able to keep the place super cold. That way everyone can, uh, it helps with your skin infection issues as well. But I know that high school coaches don't really have, we don't really have a lot of say-so in how cold to keep the building. But we keep ours cold and we just write the check. But um, it does help. That's the reason hospitals are kept cold. So there's another skin infection prevention tip also. But uh, that's what we do as far as keeping our skin infections down. Uh, I'm not saying we still don't have a few because we do. Unfortunately, it's part of wrestling. But, uh, you know, our goal is to have the safest camp in America from a supervision standpoint, coaching standpoint, uh, only ran by adults, but also, um, you know, just keeping track of the... Uh, on top of all the skin issues and things because they can be dangerous so there's a there's there's what we do and uh um hopefully it's a good tip for you guys good luck